Hey everybody, I'm Ben. I'm Karen. And we're the Shippers. And we are illustrators, writers, and designers, and we love printed material. And uh, we're gonna look at Mike Mignola's Abu Gung and, um, is it the called beanstalk? The Beanstalk? <laughs> Abu Gung and The Beanstalk. And The Beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> Both versions. So a lot of people probably have seen The Amazing Screw on Head. It's, it's a probably the most famous non-Hellboy comic that um, Mike, Mike has done. Um, and this is a collection of that and other uh, short kids. stories. Yep, short stories. Um, and uh, so I, I, I came to know the stories in this one first, and then I found this in just a, a comic bin dive at a local bookstore. Um, and Scatterbrain is also a collection of short stories, um, and it's Dark Horse's uh, I don't know I guess fling kind of thing with like. I don't know. I, I, just, I think they had a lot of ideas or, or artists that they wanted to try. So this is not Mike's exclusive. There's a lots of different stories. Mm -hmm. and um, But then it starts off with Abagong and the Beanstalk. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is 104. So there's four Scatterbrain comics. Um, and uh, Mike heads, heads this one out. And um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to, to that. But first, um, Karen, what are you working on? Yeah, so... I um, have these worksheets on my blog. It's um, 2022 goal setting worksheets that Ben and I both um, used right before the new year started. Um, there's five worksheets. You can download it on my blog and we'll put a link on it um, in our show notes. Um, but then I will be also having a newsletter. So feel free to sign up for my newsletter as well. Um, there you can find things that will help you in your creative journey. Um, and yeah. And, website, and, and yeah, you can find them on my website, KarenShipper.com. And Ben, what are you working on? Um, so I'm working, I'm almost done with Joe Death and the Graven Image, coloring the final pages now. And it will be published by Dark Horse Comics next year, or sorry, this year, <laughs> 2022. Um, and it is on the surface, a skeleton with a little um, moth in his chest. Um, under the surface, there's a lot of stuff. Um, but you can learn more about it when it will be released and more details, character designs, that kind of thing, um, by signing up for my newsletter, uh, by going to my website, benjaminshipper.com. All right, let's dive in. All right. Um, so which one should we do first? I think I'm going to do, uh, let's go. Okay. Well, first of all, I yeah. think this one, this is published in when? 20 oh that's a good question this is in 98 yes and this is in i should know i think it's 2010 or yeah something? we can look in there it was like a 12 year difference yeah I believe. yes 12 years yep. difference yeah so i'm a big fan of like reiteration as you know <laughs> like uh joe death has gone through multiple phases i've drawn the whole book once and then redrawn it but in the first issue i think i've drawn it like five times at least um, and it is weird. It's like a little perfectionist hang up, but there's a lot of growth in this. And this is one of the few things that Mike has, uh, redone, I think. Um, I don't know if the only thing, but it's, it was certainly a surprise to me because I was like, I don't, I've never seen this happen before. So we're going to play a little, like spot the difference. And we're going to see really a progression of style of, uh, of competence. This is like a master version, uh, communicating with like an older version of himself, uh, sorry, a, a younger version of himself. So what I see in this is like a master, um, of a craft and, uh, and communicating with like his past, his past yeah. self. <laughs> so we're going to have, um, yeah. let's flip through the story real quick on this one. Right. Um, and, uh, this, so this one is expanded. Um, and uh, there's a framework going on on the first page. Um, and this like archeologist is sort of setting up the scene. He's kind um, of the storyteller, mm -hmm. the narrator. Yeah. Is he the narrator? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, so. right. It's like, it's a classic uh, kind of fairy tale kind of mm -hmm. feel. And with all of those, they all kind of enter by a storyteller, I think, um, and a narrator. So it's not like it has to be there to see that narrator, but it's really nice when that happens, I think. And Mike didn't have that in the first um, version. And um, 
I think he saw an opportunity to like expand the world a little bit, give it a little bit more credibility, I would say. It's very easy world building, in my opinion, to set something up like that because it's like Abu Gung is a character, but now he's a character of myth and legend almost. Mm -hmm. um, and I love his writing. His writing is very good and direct. And he says uh, that Abu Gung was cursed with an eventful life. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that too. Because I feel like most people are thinking like, oh, you know, if I have an uneventful life, it's going to be so great. You know, like nobody wants tragedies in their life, but here he's saying. Yeah, people sort yeah. of want like adventure, but they don't necessarily see the downside of just like adventure. It's like in a story you can have adventure, but in your own life, it's like, oh, it's, maybe it's kind of like a curse actually. Uh, uh, so he enters this uh, old village um, where uh, these old hags <laughs> uh, set up a story of their life and um, where they came from, had a rich father, he died, they spent all their money, um, and now they're covered in flies. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shorthand for like the little flies. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and then I don't know if this is a re, a, a, a retelling of an older, it sounds really, well, it says I should know here, where it comes well, from. It's, but, sorry. it says here, as translated by Professor B.E. Stu. Uh, so, um, I think that's him. I don't know. Oh. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's very like, uh, kayfabe for lack of a better word gotcha. or the right word. <laughs> um, it's like, it is, it is an age old tale. Uh, I've definitely heard the magic bean story, right? And right. I guess it's, uh, but this is terrifying for a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, right. Yeah. Right. It is the magic beans where y you have something and you, uh, kind of a, a shyster in an alley. Uh, sells you magic beans and you know promises the, that uh, you're gonna be wealthy or you're going to live forever or something um, and so there was three sisters mm -hmm. and then the two these are two of the sisters and the third sister had sold all her jewelry for well the other people got food for it and she got three beans three magic beans and she ate them. Yeah, after they beat her. They were not happy about uh, her getting the magic beans, so she ate all three herself. And um, instead of saying, like, exactly what happened, he says, it made a, or she says, it made a horrible sound. I was, I was a little confused by this, because I was like, wait, what made a horrible sound? <laughs> like, the beans? But then I think it's the sister. Yeah, yeah, what, ha yeah, what happened here is the, hor is what, you know, probably a lot of, you know, screaming and, uh, but oh. it's, it's hidden. It's like, it's, uh, it's not it's, spelled out. Yeah. It's good Hitchcock kind of like, you know, show, uh, or at least imply and don't show, um, like there's no need to be graphic. Uh, we can sort of tell what happened in between her eating the beans and her now, yeah. um, she's dead and a beanstalk is growing out of her and the Abu Gang is like, why don't you climb up and see what's up, up there? And Again, it's so it's he's great at comedy. We are two old women who eat garbage. We can't climb. <laughs> um, and Abu Gang goes up. It takes up. him nine days mm. to go up to the very top of the beanstalk, and there he sees a devil. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of Hellboy, right? Yeah, Hellboy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Bad Hellboy at the top. Um, just a demon character. Yeah. The ears are interesting. I noticed mm -hmm. those are like kind of floppy dog ears, which mm -hmm. I personally love, or like lobes almost. But um, anyway, so he gets up there. He sees the devil that kind of sold the magic beans to Polinka, the sister who bought him. And um, he becomes a trickster, kind of. He says, uh, you know, the devil's kind of gloating that like she got what she deserved, she's dead. And uh, Abu Gung says, she's not dead. <laughs> and the devil's like, whoa, uh, you know, I've been playing this trick a long time and they usually die kind of thing. And so uh, he's like, I have to, I have to, I have to see like a nose that big. And like, that's, that's odd, you know, I, I should look over. So he looks over and- uh, Punt. <laughs> Punt, yeah, oh, nice. Uh, takes advantage of that and he falls to his uh death and breaks open and all the money that he I, I suppose collected throughout his life uh and this like 
from this perpetual ruse that he was um, giving people. Uh, and so the uh, old women are wealthy beyond compare. And they said they waited for the boy to return, but he never did. Um, and Yeah, and it says, uh, so we give the professor again, and he says what adventures he had and how he eventually became Gung the Magnificent, almost conqueror of the entire world. Those are tales as yet undiscovered. And actually, I forgot about this, but Gung shows up here. Uh -huh. to... That's Gung. Well, yeah. So like, so in Screw on Head, Abu Gung is kind of um, here. This is his tomb. So I think this is Abu Gung. Mm. And um, he holds, you know, a, a secret kind of artifact. And uh, so, yeah, I totally forgot about that. But they are kind of connected. Um, and I just think it's wonderful that these pieces come together. Um, so it is a very kind of like the end that it's a short story. It's very short. They don't like dive into many details. You assume a lot of things and you kind of have to, you know, like it kind of lets your imagination kind of build out like what's happening with everything. Like yeah. how did the devil die? Like nothing is ever explained, which I kind of love like the mystery of the yeah. story. Yeah, I think Mike calls it fairy tale logic, but I think which I think is great, and it is a setup for. I mean, he could have a whole Conan type character, uh, Conan or Tarzan or uh, you know, a head lopper type like barbarian character, um, if he wanted to. I, I probably think he's just so busy, he uh, he just has more ideas than um, time to do. Um, so let's check out. Yeah, the comparison and. Um, you know, these are very similar. It's wonderful to see like really in-depth detail of like, you know, you could look at these things for hours and, and spot the little differences. Well, I mean, first of all, we don't even have a professor here telling the story. So that's completely new. Mm -hmm. And then the whole panel like expanded. So mm -hmm. there, this was in two, two pages and here it's only one. Mm -hmm. The colors here are so much more fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or like there's a lot more colors, but I think in this one, it in the newer version, it to I don't know what what do you think? Um, why do you think he subdued the colors? Yeah, so Dave Stewart is actually the colorist on both. Oh, interesting. Um, so it's his progression as a colorist as well, um, and I think this color is more appropriate to the story and the feel of uh, the world that he sets up. Like, uh, I mean, I'm sure some technology is a little different, but. This is, yeah, a lot more colorful. I mean, it's inside this this comic, which has a colorful comic uh, color, and it's uh, a funny kind of thing. Um, so it is different. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I prefer this a lot because it sets the mood. It's like, it's just a, a I think a better setting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think you said, you know, if you read this, you wouldn't be disappointed at all. No. And yeah. we were like, yeah, I don't know that I would have um, redone this one. But I think I think he was looking, for, maybe looking for material to add to uh, this collection. And he, re he liked this one enough to think like, oh, you know, there's some opportunity to mm -hmm. um, do better here. Uh, so flip the page. So this is, um, yeah. Wait, is it over? Uh, so stuff like, you know, seeing the edge of a building instead of just seeing mm. uh, the the door there, um, the silhouettes he's using, you know, all we have to see is the hair, the eyes and the nose. And here it's like, um, you know, just a, a shadowy silhouette. There's no, not even any fe features. Um, mm. And just like an infinite amount of things that are improved on, I think. Um, I would say hair. He's found a really f great way of stylizing um, and having an I iconographic thing for hair. Um, and here it's sort of like a waterfall. It's just kind of like this, <laughs> you know, shorthand for hair. But here he's really getting into detail, but not, for, you know, not, not overly detailed. But he's got a great uh, back and forth between little lines and dark blacks. Um, yeah. And uh, and these panels are much bigger. So like he's uh, 
this has grown in size because of the expanded pages. And so there's more, I would say more room to breathe. Um, so here we see the comparison of the family, um, the like, the headwear here is a lot more like elaborate compared to that one. I think there's more of a direct translation between these two, whereas like these two kind of feel like different characters. Um, and even like this person, like uh, the Palenka is the girl, the sister who died. Um, but then... Um, yeah, and uh, the whole selling of magic beans is different as well. Well, and yeah. I was noticing like the eyes on the people, mm -hmm. like, I don't, I was trying to see, like something about, there's more person, I don't know, like, I couldn't quite figure out which ones I liked better. <laughs> Maybe I was like, kind of almost like too like in depth into it. And it's interesting how like this, there's a lot of detail on the background here. Whereas in this one, it fades out, whereas the emphasis is on the characters. And I really think mm. that is really well done. Yeah, he got such a good handle on like uh, value separation. So like the values that are the lightest are the heads and the little songbird. Uh, and the background is darkest. Here, the values that are lightest are the like sunshine coming in, you know? Um, and it's just a great, there's less, uh, there's less, um, there's more visual clarity, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Same here, a lighter background and a darker background, and the heads or uh, faces are popping out. Um, get more of a progression. So here's the Palenka's mm -hmm. um, comparison. Um, I yeah, like I really, I really like the stars in the background. That's yeah. how I draw stars. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> Yeah, he'll, he'll lean into, you know, like stars uh, a lot in this one, which I love. Um, this, like, uh, this progression here of, like, a beans growing, it's, like, it's not very magical here. I mean, I guess this is green and, you know, it's kind of magic-y <laughs> uh, or a, a pop of color. But here it's, like, um, kind of, like, on fire or a flame or something. And I love, I like the pulling back of the fantasy a little bit in this where it's still a it's still kind of a demon character but he's less like um you, know, you don't see his tail he doesn't have wings uh in this one his um just little differences but i would say this is a lot more restrained and this i mean you could this has a city like puts it into a setting Whereas this one, I almost thought was just like kind of like souls. Like you didn't mm. know like where exactly this was and it mm. could be a little confusing, I think. Whereas this one, you're like, oh, she went into the town and there was a, you know, a spinster who yeah. could be the devil, who could be not, you know? Yeah, little details mm. that are just add incredible amount of storytelling mm. um, and opportunities like to break up your silhouette or to have more interesting silhouettes so negative space inside your silhouettes here as opposed to like making bricks um there so like that lattice work um you know he's really paying attention to like how things are built i think architecture mm -hmm. is built um so here's the which is probably they it's the exact same um panel setting or setup and mm. but then here, yeah. you know, Palinka's the beanstalk breaks out from her. And this one, you you can well yeah, like I mm. actually I think this one the color worked better for me because you did see it break through something, mm. you know, whereas this one I wouldn't have noticed it um at all. Yeah, it's kind of going into daylight and so it's getting lighter up here. And uh I guess the shift in day. I mean, this is this is definitely also the skeleton is really interesting. This one sort of has flesh on her, and this is like all <laughs> bones. But yeah, it's interesting. The lighting, I think, the lighting is more to emphasize this than like breaking out of the top, mm -hmm. um, and it is sort of at night. Um, but yeah, like the faces and the construction is just so, you know, twelve years in between these these two, and um, you know the choices that Mike has been making like are adding up to these like choices uh these different versions like faces are sort of getting squatter um there's and... more silhouettes on like faces mm -hmm. but more deliberate silhouettes i feel like whereas mm -hmm. like this one you know the 
face is constantly like the lighting is always on the front of the face whereas this kind of changes to like mm -hmm. you know a side and like overlapping shadow he really gets has got a handle on this obviously <laughs> a master at this but this this overlapping shadows here of like um black leaves on the back side of the beanstalk whereas maybe there's some here but they're not black and they're not like they're not as much overlap there's not as much overlap well this um, one you can definitely see like a spiral mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. whereas this one you're like okay like it's, really crooked. it's a more abstract like mm. um now it's clear which also works um yeah. like yeah like like i said if i if i never saw this version i would be very happy with this but i think mm. since this was 12 years later mike could improve on him on himself i guess um mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. like you're it's like when you're running you you you're not like against anyone you you like want your best time you know you're improving against yourself almost when you get to this like level of uh excellence and a fun thing that you get when you have a narrator to a story is that you can write something and you don't have to have the character <laughs> you can just say it took abu gung nine days to climb the beanstalk and you just show the beanstalk you don't need to show <laughs> Abu Gung, uh, you know, what his scale is. You don't need to figure that out. You need to say it, and we're with you. All right, and here on the top, we have the devil, and likewise, the um, the uh, shadows are, you know, you could really tell the beanstalk is crawling its way up, and the character has changed. There's an umbrella here, I think. Yeah. Is that what it is? Uh -huh. <laughs> and then instead of a bird, there's a bat, and as well as like the background of the stars and the um, moon, um, which mm. is interesting in the new version. Um, yeah, and I imagine he wanted to not imply that this was Hellboy. I mean, it's not Hellboy, but I think when this first came out, this is after several collections of Hellboy. And so I think his color is different than red. Um, and uh, that's why we're getting like probably a purple a demon instead of a red one in this newer one. And I imagine when they got to this point, they're like, well, everyone knows it's not Hellboy. So uh, we'll, we'll just go with what looks good or looks better. And I do think red obviously pops, a rusty kind of red. Do you think at this point he didn't mind Hellboy being Hellboy if he had to be here? Or you think he, this is not Hellboy? Like, yeah, it's not, it's not. Okay. I just think, yeah. It's a known quantity now, mm -hmm. um, and I think they just chose it because um, it was like the best color. But yeah, the uh, the stars really pop. It's a lot more like storybook. It's like a very storybook thing. He'll have uh, stars and stuff in Hellboy, but they'll be a little bit more realistic or at least toned down. But the huge poppy kind of um, modern art kind of thing uh, here, I just love. Well, I'm like this with like the shadows in the back, these like black, um, mm. I don't know if you call it shadows, it, with it being diagonal, it really adds a lot of like dynamic to that. Like there's a lot of like um, action or like mm. um, immediacy almost, like where, there, and then he like punches him down, yeah. right? Like, yeah, this is sort of like, they're having a picnic in the, <laughs> it's like, it's not, you know, there's not, there doesn't need to be action happening, but the, yeah, that is interesting how, it is more, you look at this and you think action or you think movement um, because of this, the, the diagonal. Um. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> I, I really, Abu Gong's like teeth, like I think it's so funny in the new version, whereas this one he just has kind of lips of like a jungle book kind of character. <laughs> yeah, um, teeth instead of lips, that's, yeah, yeah, I definitely like the teeth better. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a fun uh, difference. I really like the seeing the edge of the earth almost because you see the stars. So you don't necessarily see the edge, but you see the stars and then the earth and then some mountains. And and then it's, so it's a little perspective. It's like, you know, if a beanstalk were this high, this is sort of the perspective that you would see. And this beanstalk would be in outer space. I mean, it would just be so high up that, yeah. It would be crazy, like, to see a whole continent instead of, like, mountains. I think that's a great, um, mm -hmm. you know, coming, you know, restraining, restraining the uh, fancy a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, 
like this one has more details, whereas this one goes into silhouettes of the hags. Um, I'm curious to hear like stylistically, like why, why Mike would choose to have, you know, when he chooses to have more details and less details, you know, like, um, and here, like, it's just the eye. I guess that, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I actually don't know. I actually, I actually think the detail is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. The pen lines might be thicker here. Um, but you lose the face on this, I mean, in this one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have the, the nose in, in the mouth uh, mm -hmm. inside this one. Because I think you get that on the silhouette. And um, there's more flies here. You can, like, discern that they're flies. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a really close one-to-one. -one, but yeah, you do lose her face. Um, yeah. And I do like the, the eye here. Like, you don't see, you don't see kind of the eye. The, you the don't see the expression. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I, I, I honestly like the jewels in this one. I think it's really fun. Whereas this one, you kind mm -hmm. of, I mean, unless you read the jewels part, I wouldn't know what this stuff was. Yeah. Uh, whereas, like variety of like a ring and yeah. a little more star kind of. Yeah. Symbols. I guess you wouldn't really know. I just think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like the color changes here. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, these are little, um, like those little, uh, gross mints that your grandma has at the, <laughs> like this chalky nasty mints um and we do get a close-up here so mm -hmm. yeah bunch of jewels and i love the bat instead of the hawk like it's so so great to have a giant bat instead of a hawk so i think hawks Why? and eagles mm -hmm. you know it, it's just been done i think i think people can like oh it's a big bird sure mm -hmm. but like a big bat you well know, and i think in great. like I mean, Western mythology, bats are probably, like, a s sign of bad luck, too, right? So it yeah. starts off with, like, he was cursed with a eventful life, and here's the bat. Yeah. That brings the curse. Yeah. Whereas a bird, I feel like, symbolism-wise, is usually hmm. on the on the um, more integrity. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the uh, the characters are aligned, a devil with a, a bat instead of a devil with a eagle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is interesting because, like, this, this page is expanded into two into one spread as opposed to just so there's a lot more emphasis on like you know you have a lot more attention on one panel um mm -hmm. and this breaks out and this ends with a narration mm -hmm. whereas this one just ends like and though they waited a year the sisters never saw a begun again and that's the end whereas this one it brings it into a, myth, a more of a mythology of yeah it could go it could go anywhere yeah, yeah it could go yeah. A lot of places and i would love i personally would love to see more abu gang i think like uh you know there's just you know characters that are reworked in different phases and i think right now andrew mclean's head lopper is like the best barbarian comic you know of today um and it, you know preceded by like conan and tarzan and um and uh, and others there's a lot more um but like i think of like primal as a as like that animation that we saw um as type of as a type of abu gang kind of character uh, just uh, you know uh, the archetype is barbarian and um very like early uh early kind of world landscape where the world could be infinite and mysterious there's not there's not uh, global satellites, you know, in this type of world. So I think there's in endless uh, possibilities with Abu Gang, but um, I'm sure Mike has Mike has uh, lots of stuff going on. I will say uh, there is a, a new edition of this being published from Dark Horse, um, and it's going to come out in July um, 1st of 2022. So this year, uh, check it out, pre-order it on Amazon, um, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, I think I've read that there's 40 more pages of like, um, could be like sketches or uh, mm -hmm. just back matter. Um, could be a new story, that would be cool. Um, but uh, check that out. And um, don't forget to uh, like, follow, and I guess subscribe on YouTube um, and share this. If you find this helpful and interesting, um, please share and just tell your friends uh, what we're doing. And we're going to share more comics in the future. 
and uh, picture books as well. Um, but Karen. Yeah. So you can find my work on um, karenshipper.com and my Instagram, instagram.com at karen.shipper. Um, Download these on her blog. It is really helpful. It was our first year kind of uh, really getting into planning. Um, definitely my first year. Karen's done it a little more successfully in the past. But uh, download these, look at these, spend some you know time alone uh, or with someone that you trust and uh, just really you know engage with uh, thinking ahead about this year. Um, and give yourself patience too. I think that's what was helpful yeah. for us. And I, you, it's always good to do like a quarterly review. So if you, if you don't watch this video in the new year, you can always, it's never too late to start thinking, thinking and planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And you can follow me on, uh, Benjamin Shipper, uh, on Instagram and also, um, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, BenjaminShipper.com. And my newsletter is uh, weekly. It's called Old Noggin. And um, it's a lot of fun. I share process of my work and other stuff like this that uh, I just find really interesting um, from, you know, uh, bin diving at uh, comic stores and just really interesting stuff, I think. But um, I'd love to uh, have you there and send a weekly newsletter to you. Um, but thanks so much for uh, watching this and... See you next time. See you next time.